Well, welcome back. Futures this morning are flat. Take a look. We've got fractional gains this morning on a big week of retail earnings. The Dow Industrials right now up six. The Nasdaq up 14. And the S&P 500 up half a point. We are awaiting target earnings this morning. They will cross any moment. We will also get TJX later this morning. And, of course, Walmart tomorrow, which will give us a good window into the consumer right now. Joining me right now is the Fitzgerald Group principal, Keith Fitzgerald. Keith, good to see you. How do you assess the consumer? I think the consumer has got some challenges. The wallets are definitely strapped. I think this earnings season in particular with regard to TJ, with regard to Walmart and Target is going to be stretched. I think that we're going to see a cutback in spending. We've been talking about it with Home Depot all week. In big ticket items, there's going to be a holdback on the wallet. So I'm very, very concerned by what I see here. Uh, let's talk about what we could uh, focus on in this upcoming quarter. Stacy, I know that we're expecting $1.39 in earnings from Target on revenue of $25.16 billion. What else are you focused on? You're looking at the comp store sales? So we're looking at the comps, which are expected to be down 4%. Now, remember, this time last year was when they cleared the decks. The consumer changed their habits. They stopped spending on discretionary. So margins were just obliterated last year. But I think the key here is, is that Target's traffic has been up the last 12 quarters. If that changes this quarter, that is a sea change here. Um, you also think there was a lot of controversy around Target, and they did lose a, a portion of their consumer base that is boycotting them. So, you know, I think the discretionary with some of the mistakes they, they made making some statements um, puts the, the potential for traffic to turn negative, and that's what the difference will be this quarter. And Keith, we're all w wondering what happens with the consumer because there is a debate over uh, the market's reaction to economic data and, in fact, the actual data. I mean, we've got an NVIDIA stock up better than 200 percent right now, year to date. Uh, the stock is up 200 percent year to date. Analysts are expecting a, quote, significant beat ahead of the chip makers' earnings. They are out next Wednesday, Keith. But you look at the macro story is slowing. And then you look at the stock market, which is up 15 percent year to date on the S&P 500 uh, because of things like NVIDIA. And, and you wonder if, in, in fact, there is a, a mismatch here. Well, I think there actually is. And you know, don't forget, you can be an economic bear in a market bull. And that's exactly what we're seeing, particularly with regard to the rush to AI. NVIDIA caught the Wall Street community by surprise because they didn't see the strength coming from big chip items like the generative AI, the H100 chip. I think those things are $40,000 a pop. You've got groups like Saudi Arabia buying thousands of these things at a time. So I think we're going to see actually strong numbers. As long as NVIDIA can hold sort of that 435, 440 range, if it can come back up on earnings, I'm beginning to think in the high 500s isn't wow. impossible, isn't a stretch. What a move. And of course, Adam Johnson, you own yes. the stock as an investor. What do you want to do going into this earnings release next Wednesday? So I actually just bought some back. You, you know, you and I have talked about NVIDIA a number of times because um, I wrote it up for my subscribers at 175 less than a year ago. Unbelievable. My target was 475. It got there. And you know, prudence is you always sell a portion of your position when it hits the target. Well, I just bought it back. My next stop, I agree with Keith, by the way, uh, 600 is my next stop for NVIDIA. 600, 600 bucks. And yeah. is, it, is it all AI that's driving this? Effectively, yeah. yeah. I mean, they also make the fastest chips in the world, right? 30 trillion calculations per second, okay. which is what enables the AI. No other chips are that fast. They're 10 times faster than the next competitor. Amazing. That's really what's, yeah, that's the appeal. So we talked about the Fed earlier. The Federal Reserve expected to uh, release the minutes from the July meeting, Keith. That's happening today at 2 p.m. Eastern. As Minneapolis Federal Reserve President Neil Kashkari says that inflation is still too high and that the Fed, quote, is not ready to declare the central bank is finished raising interest rates. What does that tell you, do you think, Keith, in terms of rate hikes through year end? Well, I tell you, you know, it's hard for me to remain with any kind of degree of decorum. I think that they're still out to lunch, and I think that they're still playing with broken models. So I look at the Fed's comments very cautiously with a big grain of salt. I think they would be prudent to give it a pause because they caused this mess in the first place or arguably played a significant role in it. So I'm watching the commentary with nothing more than a jaundiced eye figuring out what traders are going to think about what the Fed's comments mean, not what the Fed itself well, says. Well, it's all about economic activity, right? And, and now we're waiting on Target this morning, Stacey, but then you've got Walmart tomorrow, and that's going to be the big, the big kahuna of retail, right? What yes. does Walmart tell us? And also, July retail sales were, they were strong. They were good, GDP yeah. was better. So we do have data points that the Fed can say, hey, look over here. But I think tomorrow you're going to see from Walmart 60% food here. So 
they are getting the wealthier customer trading down. That is where the majority of the growth is in their food business. So I think that'll be intact here. But as inflation comes down, so do their comp store sales. And we also need a rebound in discretionary. We got to listen for that in order to get margins moving. But Walmart has the power to pass on prices in food you know, hands down, so they will continue to gain share here. Even even though they're the cheapest, or are they not the cheapest? They are the cheapest, and they will continue to take the opportunity when everybody else is keeping edging up prices to give some back to gain that share and gain that loyalty for the long term. Keith, your thoughts? Well, also, with to Stacey's point, don't forget that Walmart has also got tremendous e-commerce capability in a community built around their products. So not only are they moving groceries, but they're doing things digitally. I think that's going to give them strength when other retailers falter. Yeah, it's interesting, Joe. Concha, when you talk about an economy that is slowly but, but surely looking better from an inflation standpoint, sure. growth is still weakening. And yet uh, the president doesn't appear worried about all the spending. He's still trying to get his student loan (laughs) bailout through. That's just more stimulus. That's symbolic. He knows that the Supreme Court shot this down one time. He's doing it again so he could show younger voters. Look, at least I tried. You know, that Supreme Court, they're politicized. They they shot this down and they're trying to hurt you. The bottom line is that 50 percent of those loans go to those who have graduate degrees right, or advanced degrees. Those are doctors and lawyers, the type of people that could pay their loans back. So if I'm a That's waitress, I'm a construction worker, where, where's my bailout? Where, right. Where's my right. loan forgiveness? I think politically it's it's one of the stupider things that we've seen from this administration. Well, I mean, they knew that it was unconstitutional. We all knew it. Of course. Um, to just forget so, all of this billions in debt. How about the people who actually paid down their debt? Well, you know, I had student loans, and it took me many, many, many months and many years. It was $112.84 that I sent yeah. to Braintree, Massachusetts. I mean, literally into my 30s, you know, to pay to pay down those loans. Um, and I'm not saying that, oh, I should get some sort of refund now because I paid them. Ba- no, but, um, you know, that's the way it works. You sign a contract. You know, if you take out a mortgage, you agree to pay it back. You don't just forgive all this We stuff. have breaking news, and that is the target earnings crossing the table. It looks like a uh, big win on earnings, but a miss on revenue. Earnings per share coming in at $1.80 a share. That's better than the $1.39 that estimates were uh, were out there for Wall Street uh, economists. But look at the revenue. Revenue coming in at $24.77 billion. That is below the $25.16 billion that the street was looking for. We're digging into these numbers right now uh, because we also want to look at comp store sales. Stacy, you mentioned comps earlier this morning as something key to look at. Uh, the stock right now is up one and a half percent. Your thoughts? Well, I think, first of all, think about the expectations that went into this quarter. I think we saw five sell side downgrades into the quarter and again, up against one of the easiest comparables from last year. But we want to see those traffic numbers, number one. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm not surprised that revenue is disappointing. Again, this stock has just been hammered by the sell side saying this was going to be disappointing. So short of disastrous here, stocks relief rally. Stock is doing a big rally right now up better than three percent despite a revenue miss and the company lowering its full year earnings uh, per share Uh, the guidance does not look good they're missing revenue expectations with 24.77 billion they're lowering the full year earnings outlook Uh, the uh, stock of course uh, had been uh, hurt uh, over the last couple of months and this morning look at what's going on Stacey are you surprised that this move up better than four percent right now again I'm not because the you know the expectations were that they were going to take a huge haircut um, to the guidance and that discretionary is still under pressure and that yes they were going to lose share from some of the the public PR mistakes they've made with some of the product mix so that they had alienated some of their consumers here but I think the the you know the bottom line is here discretionary is still under pressure targets got the private label when that comes back and the discretionary spend comes back that's when you get the margin uplift so people are looking to let's say six months from now when the consumer turns and brings back that margin product yeah you mentioned mistakes that they made Keith they had a pride section pride merchandise where they got uh, criticized uh, for your thoughts look at this stock right now it it is uh, right now moving uh, well it was up five percent and it is up five and a third percent right now on target in the pre-market we just showed you the chart from yesterday Keith your thoughts 
This kind of move makes me want to short it. I don't think this is sustainable, so I'm going to look at this and say I'm going to go long Walmart or Costco, which I do own, and then go short with this one because I don't think this sustains. This is a technical move. It's a relief rally. That's about it. All right, so you're selling into a move on Target, which is up right now 5.5%. Do you want to jump in? So the cops. That's my temptation. I- yeah. The comps were missed down 5.4 percent. That pro- that's probably a bit of a relief, right? The street was down 4 percent, but I think you know the big thing is you have to look at the inventories are down 17 percent. So that's what the, that's what the investors are that's, looking that's at. That's good for them. That's, they had too much. They had too much, and now you know that sales to inventory spread is evening out, which implies margins are going to continue to be up. Margins were up nicely here, so that's the real key. All right, inventories down, comp store sales down, stock up. 6%. Keith, good to see you. Keith Fitzgerald. Hi, it's Keith here. Thanks for checking out today's highlight clip. What'd you think? Did I make sense? Is there something you'd like to add? Make sure you leave a comment down below and of course click subscribe to keep up right here on YouTube or sign up for the email newsletter at the link below. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram for my real-time thoughts on markets, analysis, and a whole lot more.